As two photographers, we've always wanted to make a coffee table photography book. And being from Newfoundland, we always assumed that that's what the subject would be. Due to some life events, we ended up having to move away from the island and the project kind of just fell on the back burner. Usually these photography books are a compilation of one's life work, but since we're not living on the island anymore, we thought, could we get enough images for a photography book in two weeks? We decided, why don't we take two weeks and plan this epic road trip across the province and try to create this coffee table book. But here's the catch. We are not landscape photographers. I'm overwhelmed though, man. I don't know what to do. It's like we were in this amazing spot. I need like a wide shot, but like, I don't know. I think I need telephoto. I don't know. You need it all. I'm just not really sure how to shoot this. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this for two years. Two years in the making. Yeah. Being a tourist in my own uh, province that I don't even live in anymore. We start today. We start today. Day, day zero or day one? Day one. Is this day zero or day one? Before we start this story, we have to get one thing out of the way. It's not Newfoundland, it's not Newfinland, it's Newfoundland, understand? So the province is called Newfoundland and Labrador, and Newfoundland is the island, while Labrador is the mainland component. For this book, we're just going to be focusing on the island of Newfoundland, which is where Chris and I are from. The island of Newfoundland is kind of classically broken up into four regions. You have the Avalon Peninsula, Eastern, Central, and Western region. Every region almost has its own personality. Different types of weather, different types of geography, different geology. When I think of the weather in Newfoundland, the word mozzie comes to mind, which is kind of that damp, drizzly, foggy kind of weather. RDF, rain, drizzle, fog. And that's just part and parcel of how it sits in the Atlantic Ocean. We're actually hoping for those classic mozzie weather conditions because not only do they make for really dramatic and epic moody photos. We're trying to capture the province as is. And Becky's equipped me with a camera of my own, so we're gonna be two photographers now, focusing 100% on trying to just get as many good shots as possible. When I worked at a marketing agency, you'd start a project from, from scratch. You'd open up InDesign, you'd have blank pages, and you would design something from start to finish with text and images and graphics. That project would go from being blank to fully designed, proofed, ready to go to the printer, printed off into production, X amount of copies made, and that project was done. This is something that I used to do all the time. It's just in a slightly different format. We're designing a book from scratch, which means that I can shoot for the layout. I can shoot photos composed in such a way where I can leave a gap on the side for text. I know what the layout's gonna be because I'm designing it, so I can shoot for that layout. So for this trip, we flew into St. John's International Airport, which is on the Avalon Peninsula of the island of Newfoundland. We decided to start in St. John's because it's familiar to us. We're up and I feel like we're gonna miss the sunrise. Day one. Day one. TPE said sunrise at 5.15. So we'll start at like 4.18. It's 4.42 right now. We've got a 32 minute drive to our very first shoot and the sky is epic and we're not gonna be there for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna be kind of confused. I'm gonna be scrambling. But I'm just so used to shooting video now and I haven't thought about photos in so long. My photography style, style was portraits. Portraits with a 50, real estate with a 16. How, I don't know how to shoot landscapes. I was an amateur landscape photographer. That's what I like to do. Yeah. Remember when you lack it, bracket and stack it. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. So we figured we start our shoot at Cape Spear, which is a lighthouse on the most eastern point of North America, excluding Greenland. Right. I'll see you in a bit. Be careful, don't go over the cliff. Okay. Batteries for the camera are in there. We wanted to capture a bunch of landscapes, kind of quintessential Newfoundland, but in our own way. So when I think of Newfoundland, I'm thinking about whales and puffins and icebergs and epic cliffs and coastlines. So I'm kind of thinking about this project 
more in terms of page layout, so capturing these sets of images that kind of represent a time and place. Some morning is morning. Some morning is morning. Some morning is going to be some morning. What? The sun was rising, and I was going up to the lighthouse, and it was like the stress of trying to get this shot with the sunrise happening. And so I got up there and like got a couple of shots. Sunrise is over with, like we're done with that. And once the stress of the shot is over with, I'm like warmed up now, I took a couple of pictures and now I can just enjoy the location that I'm in and like the camera and just the experience of going out and taking pictures. I just love photography so much. I love that. Yeah. The days that we go out and just shoot for fun and the whole day is just like around photography and then we get back into the big feed, that's like an ideal day. And then we get to do that for two weeks. What's going on? I'm just trying to do some like long exposures. I got a six to nine step uh, variable indie on my 7200. So I just want to get like a slow shutter kind of wave shot. Add a little bit of drama. A little drama. Or oh, abstract, huh? Yeah, it's a little, a little challenging actually. Yeah. It's funny how it goes from being like super enjoyable to being like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Cold, 742, so I'm hard to walk away from those waves. Yeah. I think I took like a couple hundred shots of waves. I don't even know if I got one. We got a few shots to warm ourselves up in familiar areas. And the next plan was to continue westward and see other parts of the island. We're headed to Dildo. To Dildo. Yes, you heard us correctly. We are going to Dildo. This is our last destination in the Avalon region of the island. And then tomorrow we're going to be heading into the eastern region. We're hoping to see a few icebergs, but today we're going to try and get some fish and chips. Yes, Dildo is a real place. That is the name. It's like a part of a boat or something. I think it's like the bottom of a boat. All right, we're coming up on Dildo. We're about seven minutes away. It's really funny you're driving through these roads that used to feel so familiar to me. And now coming back with like fresh eyes, it's like I have a completely new perspective on it. Seeing a lot of pictures, whereas before nothing was a picture. Everything was just the same thing I was used to seeing. It gives you a new appreciation. Yeah. For Dildo. <laughs> So while standing in Dildo, we we're about 30 minutes away from a place called Harbor Grace, which is the home to a steamship that's been run aground called the SS Kyle. Now, I remember the SS Kyle from road trips when I was a kid, and my parents would be driving to a place called Carbonier, which is less than 10 minutes away from the ship. So my grandparents immigrated from China. Around the 1950s, they started a restaurant in Carbonier called Fong's. Carbonier is actually a small town only 10 minutes north of the SS Kyle. And I always thought that was so neat. There's just an abandoned ship right off the coast that you can see. I think most kids would probably think that's pretty neat. When I was a kid, I remember, you know, driving to go out around the bay. Each time I would be like, well, I wonder if we're gonna see that old like abandoned ship just like left there to rot. So the initial intention was to shoot at night, well after sunset and shoot astrophotography or basically shoot the Kyle with stars in the background. Of course, doing that requires a clear sky and there was not a clear sky. Houston, we have a problem. It's supposed to start raining at, in an hour and a half. I'm afraid that we're not gonna get our shot tonight. It says 90% chance of showers. How much? Four What's rain the... dots. It's no. got the three rain dots. The icons. The, the icons. The icons. Four rain dots. All we have is like a couple of fox shots and like a lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> How many shots do we need for this book? Let's go get fish and chips and then we'll reassess the situation tonight. It's a bit windy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the rain just started as soon as I opened my fish and chips. It so, smells so good and it's so tempting just to eat it right now, but the rain's coming in off the water now. Alright, let's go, let's go. This is, this is the reality. The book's gonna have this like nice idyllic shot of the dock looking over the water eating fish and chips. No one's gonna know how windy it was. And then we never got to eat it here because it was raining. <laughs> I'm so hungry. That's a steep hill. You look a little disheveled. Yeah, I feel a little disheveled. All right. Oh my god. Oh. Mm. Light batter, very crispy. This is the uh, classic quintessential if you will, Newfoundland weather. Rain, drizzle, fog. This RDF is, is RDF, what like. yeah. This is exactly what I think of when I think of Newfoundland. Not like the sunny blue sky day that we've had for the past three days. And the sound of the wind on the house. Yep. And sometimes the house just shakes a little bit. 
using an app called TPE to track the direction of the sunrise and the sunset, as well as the time the sun sets and sun rises. If we go to the Kyles across the peninsula over here, saying that sunset is at 8.44 and civil end is at 9.22. It smells. Ew. It's a smell. Mosquitoes are bad, eh? All right, we're down in Harbor Grace. So the SS Kyle was used to transport people and supplies between Carbonier, Newfoundland and the mainland of Labrador up until about 1967 where it ran ashore in Harbor Grace. Living on the island, like I never thought to go out and shoot coming back to the island. I was like, oh, maybe this is like a great opportunity to go shoot this ship. It makes for a great photo. It's a pretty epic old ship. Yeah, I think this is my shot. I'm thinking if we can get this down this far on the beach, you can actually see the other side and look more down the barrel of it. I couldn't have even picked better conditions to shoot this boat in because it looked so ominous and airy just sitting there in the fog. I think this was a success. I originally thought we'd be coming out here for some astro tonight, but the weather obviously hasn't been the greatest. We got like a little break in the weather. We managed to get a couple of shots and now it's raining, so. I think we're done for the night. No sky, no stars. It's pretty foggy, so. But it worked out, because the foggy was super moody. It's funny coming back to the island as a tourist now in your own home province. We kind of took all these spots for granted, or at least looked at them through a lens of, oh, these are just all sites that we've seen already, you know, as kids. But we never thought, oh, let's document them, let's shoot them, let's show them to other people through our eyes. So living away from the province for over six years now, it kind of gives us a different perspective. Two weeks seems like a long time to go on a shoot and to be shooting every day, but when you really break it down and look at it, you know, in terms of region and then per location, it's actually not that much time. The island of Newfoundland is massive. It's area is actually the size of Pennsylvania. And it's just impossible to go to every single location in a two week span, especially because some of those locations require a boat to get to. In 300 meters, slight right onto Trinity Road South 80, Newfoundland and Labrador 80 South. Newfoundland, understand. We are on the road here this morning, leaving Dildo, heading out to Trinity. We're transitioning now into the eastern region of the island. And today's gonna to be interesting because we're actually going to Bonavista, that's our end destination, but we're heading to Trinity first because Chris's family's there, my parents are there. We're really excited because today we're gonna to get to experience a traditional like lobster boil up. And apparently it takes water from the ocean to boil the lobsters in. So we're gonna to get to uh, see all that in action and then eat some lobsters today, which is kind of yeah. exciting. So we're making that trip not only to see your parents, but to have this kind of traditional Newfoundland experience. As long as they do it, I, feel, I, kind, of, I kind of feel bad. Would you consider a lobster boil a traditional Newfoundland event? No. No? So apparently lobster boils are not traditional Newfoundland culture. That is news to me. By the way, this is Eric, my mom's partner. And fun fact, he grew up in Trinity. They still have a house there. And he took the SS Kyle every summer to the Northern Peninsula. So we learned something new. I guess traditional in our lifetime, not in Eric's lifetime. When I was a child, nobody ate lobster. They actually gave it away. It's not a traditional Newfoundland dish. It's only in maybe in the last 40 or 50 years that lobster has become a, something that people um, eat. See, but traditional for us is different traditional for Eric. Mom would wake us and tell us to come sit at the table for lobster feed. And it was late at night because they ran a restaurant. And then so midnight we'd be sitting down eating lobster. But in an Asian family, lobster reigns king. <laughs> Any seafood in the Asian culture is considered primo. We're gonna go on a boat and we're gonna pull a lobster trap. Well, he's gonna pull a lobster trap so we can see it. Mm -hmm. I don't have any motion sickness medication, so. Uh oh, you can't be ill equipped. I know. <laughs> over there's in the lawn. What? Over there's in the lawn. Did you pick that up in the lawn? That's a lawn. See, it's windy right there, right? But when he goes over there, he's in the lawn because he's inside the cliff, so there's no wind. In the lawn means when you're out of the wind. Oh. Like, the wind is blowing here. If you went in front of that car and cootsie down, there'd be no wind and you're in the lawn. What did you say? I'm coochie down. Coochie down. The wind chill today, I'd say it's probably about two degrees, close on zero. Yeah, 
Probably. If you're going to get wet, would that change your mind? Yes, it would. What? So you'd want to go twice? No, I'd like not going. Now, blood jackets here, whoever wants to put one on. Or I don't inflate ones. There's someone's been gutting fish in this. <laughs> it's gonna be a tumbly ride. You guys aren't aren't having uh, no. second thoughts. You don't wanna come? There's no. no. There's no lung out there where the water's calm. <laughs> <laughs> this one the tail is narrow. Yeah. Here it's wide. Wide as a female. <laughs> this is the longest. Oh, you can see there's not a ripple on the water. Yeah. It is nice in the lunge. Beauty. Nope. Narting. Only just crabs eating bait. Thank it's you enough. so much for taking us out. That was just awesome. It's pretty calm over there. Yeah. It's Lund. In the Lund. In the Lund, <laughs> yeah. We'll learn a new, a new word, word today. So even though lobster boils, at least to Eric, is not traditional, it sure felt like it because we took the lobsters to Eric's shed. You don't just store your stuff there. You have parties in the shed. You do activities in the shed. You boil lobster in the shed. One of the great things about having the shed, you have a problem, you come back in with your high pressure sprayer. The shed is definitely a quintessential part of Newfoundland culture. You, with the female, you get the roll inside, the red stuff. What made that moment, I think, so much more meaningful for me was to be able to share that with family. I, th I think food does taste better when you're eating with loved ones, and it just sweetens the whole experience. So we said our goodbyes to our family, left Trinity, and we ended up in a place called Bonavista. And I've actually never been to Bonavista myself, so this was a little bit of a new spot for me. So about 10 or 15 minutes drive away from where we were staying in Bonavista is a place called Spiller's Cove. And rumor had it that there was an iceberg hanging out in the coast. Morning. I just spilled boiling water all over my foot. Are you ready to go? Yep. We're up early. It's like 4.30. And uh, we're not the only people up. There are two fishing boats going up the bay just now. Coffee made. Tea made. Don't accidentally drink my coffee. I'm disappointed. The thing about icebergs is that they're pretty unpredictable. Even if somebody says that there's a berg there, the night before, there's no real guarantee that it's still there. Is that an iceberg? I see something poking over the thing. There's a dude standing there. I think it might be a rock. No, dude. That's white. I'm pretty sure that's an iceberg. I don't know how to shoot an iceberg. <laughs> the thought of it overwhelms, overwhelms me. Like yesterday, we shot Eric doing the lobsters uh -huh. right in my element. Today, uh, outside my comfort zone. <laughs> when you lack your bracket and stack it. <laughs> it's an iceberg. Iceberg, yeah, iceberg. right ahead. Burgy bits over there. You know what they say, when you lack it, bracket and stack it. I'm overwhelmed though, man. I'm just not really sure how to shoot this. I don't know what to do. It's like we were in this amazing spot and I don't know what to do. There's people right there with the tent and I just, my camera is like, I want to shoot them, you know what I mean? Yeah, shoot them. It's, it's funny because like, it's just landscapes are just so difficult for me. So the way I got into still photography is actually because of video and I wanted to shoot high resolution time lapses with a DSLR. Bought my first DSLR in probably around 2005 and then kind of got into still photography by accident. So eventually when I was in university, I was actually shooting more still photos than video and wanting to beef up my resume, I actually applied for a position as photo editor for the university newspaper, The Muse. Doing that one year of photojournalism actually taught me a lot of lessons in photography, forced me to kind of branch out as a photographer. And a lot of people probably don't realize, but as a photojournalist, you're thrown into to these photo assignments to get a captivating image in less than ideal conditions with time constraints and with subjects that might not be the most interesting photographically. A lot of it comes down to how can I look at this through a different perspective. But the pressures of shooting a landscape versus say a high profile person, they're a lot different. You're not taking up someone's time when you're shooting a landscape, it's just you in the landscape. But the difference is that the pressure you're feeling is the light is rapidly changing. You know that, okay, I have ideal light conditions right now and I don't wanna squander it. Am I getting the best angle? Am I getting the best shot? Because I know this light is going to expire. It's interesting to hear you talk about photography so passionately. Why did you stop? other interests pop up. You know, you have a finite amount of time in your life. Photography fell by the wayside and I haven't thought about it in a while. It's 
opening up a part of my mind that I haven't used in a while, if that makes sense. So the goal of this trip is to have enough good, good images to assemble a photo book. And while most people will compile their best images through their entire body of work for their whole career, this is not the assignment. The assignment now is to capture Newfoundland in that slice of time. We are headed out to our last shoot of the Eastern region before we head into Central tomorrow. We're driving 45 minutes on the other side of the peninsula from Bonavista to Tickle Cove, Cove uh, for the sea arches. So we're gonna do a little sunset sea arch mission and we've brought our camp stove and some food that we're gonna cook up while we're out there. We're arriving a little bit early. We're gonna scope out our location for shooting and um, cook up a little meal. The road wasn't in the best shape, not gonna lie. There were a lot of potholes, but we did see a moose and a baby moose and we just caught the tail end of the baby moose going right into the woods, so that was pretty cool. All right, let's go. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God, Chris. You're... She's still open. Disaster, crisis averted. Oh, well, I put on my layers again. Yep. I know as soon as we get to the ocean. <gasps> Where's my tripod plate? I know once we get to the ocean, it's gonna be a bit, a bit chilly, I think. There's Hopefully we can find a place to coochie down and- uh, Coochie down. Cook up a little, little feed and have a tea or something. Now, where's the sea arch at? The rock formations are insane. Like, not only are they like purpley red, but it's like so many little layers the whole way. Fascinating. Is that the arch right there? I think that's the arch. Holy shit. Cool. Wow, now I'm really feeling like the Kraken. When the sun goes down, I'd like to get a wide shot here, I think. Beauty. Beauty. Tonight, we're cooking um, next to the sea arch at sunset and we're having mushroom risotto. This is not sponsored, but this is good to go. I saw a, a review on this and somebody said it was really good, so I thought, let's try it. Just over two cups, so I just put just over two cups in here. All right, what's the verdict, Peckham? This is shockingly good. Yeah? Like, this was freeze dried. This came in a bag and we put in water and now it's this. <laughs> There's so many mushrooms in there. Yum, I get this again. Yeah. Mmm. I don't really feel like shooting right now. Well, we're here. I know. My drone shots didn't work out the way I wanted them to. I'm not really feeling the shot either. Like, I think the location is beautiful and like being here is a really amazing experience, but I'm not feeling inspired by a shot. I think there's one shot I want to get like a long exposure down there. But honestly, I think that this location for me tonight was actually more about seeing it and the landscape and then just kind of cooking out here and having a meal on the side of the cliff. Like, I think I was more excited about having a meal on the side of a cliff and boiling up some water than I am actually shooting tonight. I think I underestimated how challenging this trip would be from like a stamina standpoint and an inspiration and creative standpoint as well. Like every day, multiple times a day, having to shoot and doing it while you're fatigued is also kind of challenging. So definitely underestimated <laughs> this, uh, this whole thing, so. So we're about five days into the trip now, and we're starting to realize that we don't have nearly enough photos at this point. I didn't realize that shooting day in, day out was really gonna be that taxing. Getting up every morning for sunrise, staying awake every night till sunset, and by the time you get home, dump all the cards to back all your photos up, it's well past midnight now, and then you're getting up for sunrise. Not just the lack of sleep, but also pushing to try and get good photos different photos. I've been using the same techniques and relying on the same patterns that I usually fall back on, the same compositions, the same decisions in exposure, the same decisions in focus. I'm also now starting to worry that all the shots are looking the same. We have to think now, okay, how can we spice things up? How can we change the look of these images? I was starting to second guess, like, am I even gonna have enough good photos to not only create this book, but to create a book that I'm actually happy with putting out there. So we're on the road now. We just left Bonavista. Now we're heading to Fogo, which is very exciting because Fogo has been 
on our bucket list forever. It's been a goal of ours for this trip specifically, but it was a goal of ours in 2019 when we tried to get to Fogo and we couldn't because the weather was too bad. So this is our second chance. It's been three years since we tried to get up there. Here's the dilemma. There is an iceberg in a place called Merritt's Harbor, which is what, an hour away from where the ferry terminal is? Yeah. It's like an hour off our course. Like if we're going directly to the ferry terminal, we'd have to go an hour to get to Merritt's Harbor, then an hour back. It creates this situation where the ferry only departs at certain intervals to get to Fogo Island, and the last one I think leaves at what, eight? I've been told that the wait for the ferry is sometimes up to three hours. Let's push it so the lights lower so the photos have a higher chance of looking nice. Um, but Becky doesn't play it safe, Pekka doesn't want to do it. The sun doesn't set till 8.50. The last ferry's at eight o'clock. Like the math doesn't even add up. We agreed that we were just gonna go to Merritt's Harbor and shoot the iceberg with the conditions that we were given. There's a real possibility that if we don't get on that 6 p.m. ferry that we could very well miss the 8 p.m. one. This is the last chance we're gonna probably be able to see an iceberg of this size. Let's take the chance. Let's go iceberg hunting. The one bailout we're hoping for, and we're, we're checking again, checking the aviation forecast, is having a lower ceiling or an overcast layer. If that marginal weather holds, that actually could work out really well to make a very dramatic scenario for the, for the iceberg during the middle of the day, which is typically not favorable conditions. The majority of the days we've had have been bright sunny days, yeah. which is very atypical for the island. I mean, we lived here for the majority of our lives. And I'll tell you, this is not representative of what the weather normally is like. It's almost been a week now, and I feel like I've been bungling like every photo shoot, and I have no idea if I have enough images for this book. That anticipation of like, we gotta get the bird, gotta get the bird was kind of growing. Hype was setting in and I was like, okay, we have to get there ASAP. So we drove four hours from Bonavista through Gander. Look at this, weather stays kind of gray. Yeah. Moody. We drove 45 minutes past the Folk Island Ferry to get to Merritt's Harbor. <laughs> We're nine minutes away from the iceberg. The alleged iceberg, I hope it's still there. The overcast marginal conditions have cleared. We now, we now have the cyan sky of death. Here's the thing, like, you can't always just shoot at sunrise and sunset. Sometimes it's just not possible. The true test of your photography skills is if you can shoot in this type of scenario and still get a shot. It's just so easy when you shoot at sunrise and sunset. That's the thing. Is it a good photo or is it just golden hour? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have like two hours at the most to try and pull something off here. I'm always feeling panicky, but I was feeling a little bit of anxiety because I really wanted to get a picture of this berg. If an iceberg's there in the morning, it's not even guaranteed to be there in the afternoon. And last year we didn't have any icebergs. I'm nervous that it's not there. We drove, the ferry is really far. We passed it way, way back. It seems like longer than 45 minutes. I don't know, this harbor looks pretty empty. Yeah, it sure does. We don't have any reception either. I can't find exactly where it is. We'll keep driving up here yeah. and right. See it. I see it. You see it? Yes. Oh, a little bit of white popping out. <laughs> okay, I think we have the hike. Oh, look, bergy bits. What are bergy bits for the uninitiated? They're little pieces of iceberg that are after breaking off, mm -hmm. and then they kind of float into shore. I wonder how treacherous this hike is. It looks pretty brutal. Do it. Let's do it. This is really sketchy. It's like a rock scramble up the side of a cliff to get over there. And there's no reception and no way to get help if one of us like breaks an ankle or like gets like falls and hurts ourselves like. We kind of risk fucking up our whole trip if we get hurt here. Nice it. smell, huh? It smells amazing. You look out here, you can see the little tiny tip of the iceberg. I'm really disappointed. Yeah? It must have moved. It probably was in this bay right here. Yeah, like yesterday. And then drifted behind this island right here. So we are right there. And the iceberg is And the iceberg's on the far side of that island. And even if... Like, there's no way to get there. So I bet that iceberg was probably in here, and that's probably where people were shooting, and it probably migrated out. What a drag, we went two hours outside of our way. This is how quick it can change. This was kind of our only chance to see this. All right, I don't know what the easiest way up, but kind of looks like right here, maybe. Bit, a bit of a boss, isn't it? Yep, it is. It's, it's beautiful up here. Stunning. Yeah, the iceberg has clearly migrated from a nice view. For, there used to be a nice view from the harbor, and it's massive. And then it, clearly it's migrated 
down, I guess downstream, and then is now situated behind this giant island. We're at the top now at the peak, and you can just see it kind of cresting over this little saddle in the island. There's not really a photo. There are no photos. No. So we're gonna throw the drone up, and uh, we, we can get some shots that way. My uh, timer saying time to leave for the ferry just went off like All right. 20, maybe 15 minutes ago. That wasn't a total bust. Air support for the win. Air support coming in clutch. <laughs> All right, let's get packed up. <laughs> Great job, Peckham. This is not over yet. That's the easiest part. Uh, the most treacherous part. group of people that just came over, looked over the bridge, and were like, no, and just <laughs> turned around and went back. We also saw a bunch of people coming from the opposite way, uh -huh. which I think is a lot less treacherous than this, but a guy said it's really wet. Well, that was a nice little hike after quite a long drive this morning. We could see the iceberg from here when we first pulled up. Oh, my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> Bum wad. Okay, so I overheard a discussion in the parking lot. Someone saying that there's a, uh, the Twilling Gate Causeway goes like right next to it. You get a perfect view of the iceberg from the road. <laughs> here we are trekking to the top of this hill. We see it from over here. It's real far away. You got some Sobeys bags for your feet? No, I should have brought me rubbers. No? You see it? Yeah, it's very far. 200 to 600? I don't even think it's gonna reach it. Pretty far away, dude. We thought that we'd be able to at least fill the frame and get an unobstructed view of the iceberg, which we weren't able to get from on top of our rock climbing area. 600 mil, we'll be able to get something. We got high resolution, worst case scenario, we can pop a little crop in. But the factor we didn't account for was that during this bright sunny day with high noon sun. It was almost like a mirage, there was ripples. What I wasn't expecting was atmospheric distortion to completely destroy my shot. In 19 years of shooting photos, I definitely learned something new that day because I had never seen that before. But also probably because I don't usually shoot telephoto and I don't shoot landscape, so why would I have seen that before? We just did what we said we did not want to do. Shoot a high value target at dead ass noon with bright sunny light. We don't really have the option of coming back. This whole thing is a challenge. Not only trying to get enough photos for a book, which I have no idea if we have, but also shooting at, you know, different times of the day and it's, sometimes it's just not ideal and sometimes, it, sometimes it's too sunny and sometimes it's too flat. What are you having a tea? <sighs> Very enjoyable, to that. Yeah. very enjoyable. Got about an hour to Fogo. Fogo Island has been on my list for so long, but I was also a little bit worried that I had overhyped it. What if we get there and it's not what I thought? Kind of can't believe we're in the lineup for the Fogo Island Ferry right now. We've been trying to get here for years, since 2019. I hope it's not one of those things where you like, you know, hyped it up so much and then it's Probably. a letdown. Yeah, it could be. So we made the Fogo Island Ferry. Ferry ride from Farewell, Newfoundland to Fogo Island is about an hour. My experience with ferries and Newfoundland have not been the greatest. Because of the wind and the open ocean, the ferries that I've ever taken off Newfoundland have been choppy as hell and I've gotten super sick. This was in sort of a protected little area with all these little tiny islands, almost acting as a buffer. So it's actually a very calm and smooth ride. Fogo Island's another spot that we just neglected when we were home living on the island. We just never really thought, hey, let's go to Fogo Island until we moved away. And it's kind of along the lines of like the old saying, you don't know what you got till it's gone. You don't know what you had until you're gone. Looks just like the island of Newfoundland. Just broke off. Good morning. Good morning. It's not morning, it's 2 p.m. 
late start, but it doesn't matter because it's a bright blue sunny day and we all know that bright blue sunny days don't make optimal photos. There are four artist studios on Fogo Island. Because they have artist residency programs where they put artists in them for a set period of time and they work. Um, that's the purpose of them. They are all architecturally designed by Todd Saunders, who's one of my favorite architects. We're gonna photograph them and I'm really excited because they're all different. They make for very cool architectural features in the landscape. So this is like Pokemon, gotta catch them all. First, we're gonna go check out Squish Studio. Let's go, I'm excited. There it is. There it is. Oh my gosh, the color of the water. Okay, check that one, now we can go. No, just kidding. <laughs> Actually, the harsh light is actually working really well. It's actually casting a perfect shadow for almost from angle to angle, which really works. Studio number two, long studio, I can actually see it. The landscape is incredible. What do you think of this thing? Wow, it's magnificent. It's large, isn't it? It's so big, it's way bigger than I thought. Gosh, just the setting with these white rocks and stuff, and the contrast between the black siding and the white. Man, I love this. This is the best, this is the highlight. Couldn't have asked for a better activity to do today. So while I appreciated the architecture on these studios, I didn't appreciate it nearly as much as Becky did, and she was in her element. I just love seeing the pure joy and her face light up as we walked up to each one. And it would almost be like if someone took like four really rare helicopters and just like sprinkled them around Fogo Island and then told me to go on a scavenger hunt, I'd probably be the same way. I just got joy through her vicariously. All right, honey. How was it? The experience has been really great. This is amazing. Insane. I did a long soldier down by the water. Did you? Nine stop ND. Fun. Yeah, fun. It was fun. We're hitting studio three and we're a bit late and it's dark. I'm not really sure if we're gonna get a shot here tonight. We're gonna try. Okay, so there's too much contrast. There's a bit of sunset still behind the tower. It's basically being silhouetted, so you can't really see any detail in there's it. There's also no ambient light at all. And there's like zero ambient light here. Yeah, so it's not really working out the way we wanted it to. Well, let's go walk up to it and see. You turn your headlamp on and just walk up there. I'm hearing coyotes like in the background. What do you want me to do with the light panel? <laughs> Back to positions, everybody. Okay, that works. Keep your head cheated like that. All right, another exposure in three, two, one. Oh, that kind of works out. Yeah? Dude. Yo. I hear coyotes, man. Coyotes? Yeah. <laughs> this path feels awfully long when you can hear coyotes in the background. Oh. Stop. It's pitch black. There's like no lights either. I see the end. Stars are out. <gasps> Gas prices. Suck. Oh yeah. It's a moral of the story. Yeah. When you're ready to quit and the dull boy says keep on pushing, it's always worth it. Another moral of the story. Even though you charge your batteries and they're charged in your bag, don't assume that they're still charged in your bag. And when you lack it, you bracket and then you, you stack, stack it. it. Yes, that's right. Tomorrow we do Bridge Studio. The last artist studio. We're gonna find it today. This one apparently is the most work because it's a bit more of a hike in. We saved this one for last. Uh, how long is the hike? About 20 minutes. <laughs> We're terrible at being outdoorsy. <laughs> yeah. We're terrible. <laughs> They said there was a lot of stairs. I'm glad we saved this one for today because I don't think I would have had the energy to do this yesterday. It was about 11 degrees today. Okay, we made it to Bridge Studio. The hike wasn't that bad. This place is epic. This one's actually gray with this bridge to it. And I just looked inside. It's small and messy, but it looks great. Let's see if you can see it. Wood stove. There's a toilet. All right, pack them. I think it was a success. I got some pictures. There's some pitcher plants. I got to shoot a couple of those. I got a bunch of textures with like colors in them. Just kind of more abstract detail shots, which I'm excited about. How about you? A couple shots from across the pond. Yeah. 
and I got a shot of a texture that had all the colors for it, so. Excellent, that's the last studio, that's Bridge Studio. We have all four feet of fish and chips, I think is well-deserved after finding all these. Being out late last night trying to get our shot. Go back, do laundry, get cleaned up, and get ready to hit the ferry tomorrow. Western region. Tomorrow, that's where we're going. All right. Taking the 7 a.m. ferry. Here we go. So let's go get fish and chips. Yum. Those like backlit style signs, the old school ones, are so classic Newfoundland. You know the fish and chips are gonna be good. Do you need a menu? No, one piece fish and chips, white tartar sauce, gravy inside. I wonder if they've got the cod bite special. Ooh, we will get cod bites to mix it up. And I'm so excited. There is literally no better activity to be at after you have a shoot than get fish and chips at a local spot. We're gonna get this to go. We're gonna bring it back to the Airbnb, enjoy our fish and chips, and then we're going to rest. Got the goods. Maybe. Look at them cob bites. This is a face of a person who basically got probably two hours of sleep last night. Definitely got what we asked for. The weather turned, uh, but significantly, not only did we get gray skies at rain, but we got a 40 kilometer an hour winds gusting 60 kilometer an hour. Pouring down rain, of course that rain's coming sideways, hitting the window. Try to get up for the 7 a.m. ferry. Mm -mm. So now we're trying to catch the 10 a.m. It's like 7.42 in the morning and the internet says to get to the ferry two hours ahead of time, so hopefully we can catch the 10 a.m. ferry. Kind of hoping it's a shit day, like maybe there won't be too much of a lineup, but. The travel gods are looking down upon us and saying, you asked for this. <laughs> Is that too much? Flag is just I know, it's flying like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's literally pointing up. We completed our goal of making it to Fogo Island and shooting the artist studios, but now we had a new goal of shooting some astrophotography in some abandoned fishing villages up the Northern Peninsula. But before we went up there, we had to go see Gross Morn. So we have not been to Gross Morn probably in about a decade. And back when we used to live on the island. And in fact, I think it was when I was doing medical school rotations was the last time that we were at Gross Morn but we wanted to come back to the actual park and actually shoot some photos in the area. You just get in the wrong car. I packed everything in the car that was next to us. It's identical. Over $10,000 worth of camera gear you just put in somebody else's car. <laughs> And left it. It's 5 a.m. They didn't drive off. Okay, now we are unpacked and repacked in the right car. Let's go. A beautiful morning. Yeah, yeah 10 degrees and calm. The key, no wind. Don't jinx it. Jinx it, dude. Yeah, man, it's windy. We must have been in Lund. We're actually walking here on the Earth's mantle, which is insane. We're in Grosshorn right now. There's trees and mountains everywhere. And then there's just one patch of just reddish orange rocks with not a lot of vegetation. Apparently this was actually the Earth's mantle and uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. There's literally no trees on any of the mountains here. And then you turn around and it's just all trees on all the other mountains here. Insane. Insane. Shall we keep checking in? shoot overall. Never regret getting up for sunrise. No. Painful at the time. Definitely type 2 fun. I've got coffee in the car calling me. Absolutely starving so we're gonna go try to find some breakfast. You can learn a lot about being outdoors by watching backpacking videos because not only are my photography gloves the best accessory that I brought on this trip but also I'm wearing a full bowl base layer underneath this and I'm so comfortable. I'm actually warm. Yeah. There you go. All right it's about seven o'clock. We've been out for a couple hours. I think I'm hungry. Not a bad view, huh? Mm. Not bad. Man, pulling yourself out of bed at 4 a.m. is terrible. Nothing gets me up out of bed faster at 4 o'clock in the morning than the prospect of a delicious breakfast. I'm talking eggs. 
bacon, hash browns, coffee. Being able to enjoy a dirty feed of greasy breakfast, that is the best. So we wanted to get one more really strong image before we left the Grossmorn area. And I wanted to go to a spot that I could potentially also get a drone shot as well. So I had to be outside the park. Looking at the weather for our final couple of days on the island, it wasn't looking so great. But the forecast said there was a 60% chance of precipitation. But you could also look at that as a 40% of not having precipitation. So we took our chances and hope for a sunset over Trout River. Oh no, babe. It's raining. I see little specks collecting on the boardwalk here, so. We forgot the rain gear. We have to see it through. We made this decision, we're gonna do it. It's not looking so good, man. No, I think we're down to a 1% a to 99% chance for versus against the yeah. sunset tonight. The cliffs I've been wanting to shoot. Great sunset. You might have been a bit of a bust. Bit of a bust there, babe. Yeah. We gotta be able to try to find another photo. Well, we gotta find something. We ain't leaving until we get something. What about that bird? That's a seagull. That's a shit dove. What about your eyeball? That's my eyeball. <laughs> well, well, we got a sliver. I guess a 10%, it depends on if you consider that a sunset. I do. Someone else is having a really good sunset next door. What did you say at the beginning of this? You gotta find joy in the little things. That's right, <laughs> I did say that, yeah. Dude, I don't know if we're gonna have enough photos for a book. I'm concerned. <laughs> like enough good photos? Yeah, I know. <sighs> Here we are a week and a little bit in, and I'm thinking like, we're on the last region of the island, and I'm not even sure I got enough photos of the three regions we just passed through, let alone anything from Western so far. You better get snapping, Peckham. All right, I give up. I'm done, let's get out of here. Let's go. When you're sitting at home, you know, planning a trip like this, you've had like a full night's sleep. It's like, wow, 14 days of photography is gonna be an absolute blast. But the reality is that like, it's very fatiguing. You're not getting a lot of sleep. You're putting a ton of creative pressure on yourself to deliver every single day. The expectations were definitely different than the reality. And I think I was a little ambitious um, on the to-do list there. So we sort of made a last minute decision to check out a place called Western Brook Fjord. The night before we were like, let's see if we can get tickets for the boat tour. We're able to secure tickets and we thought, great, we're gonna get these epic views of these crazy towering gorges. So now at this point, we're trying to balance the weather. If it's just foggy enough, it's gonna make these amazing, epic, moody landscape shots. But if it's too foggy, you're gonna lose the tops of the gorges in the clouds. When we woke up, the conditions were more or less perfect. This is exactly what we asked for. It's perfect. Yeah, this is pretty much the quintessential Newfoundland weather that we've always thought of. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm wondering how low the ceiling's gonna be, if it's gonna be below the level of the gorge. Like, are the edges of the cliffs gonna be in cloud? It is wet. Yeah. It is wet outside. It's foggy, which is okay, but it's also raining. Four statute miles visibility, also not surprising, with a 1,000 foot ceiling. Oh no. Forecasted to deteriorate to a 900 foot ceiling. Oh no. At 130. <gasps> we're probably not gonna see the fjord. Probably not. We gotta work with whatever we're given. Are you ready to go? Are you ready? It's cold. It's so cold. It's windy. It's, it's like, I, it's six degrees windy and icy. It's cold, windy, and wet. So between the Western Brook Fjord parking lot and the actual launch of the boat tour, there's about a 30 minute hike. Looking promising. We might really lock out if the view stays like that. We won't be able to see the top, but we kind of want that in between. So that we bought our, brought our raincoats yeah. and gloves. You didn't forget it this time. Six degrees and sideways rain. And we were thinking our whole time, okay, this is gonna be amazing. Yes, it's a little bit foggy. Yes, it's a little bit rainy. Update on the fog, can't see shit, so. Within the span of like five minutes. Yeah, it really socked in, so. You know, whatever, I'm going in with an open mind. Make the most of it, right? That's can't right. go back tomorrow or the next day or the next day. We gotta keep moving. Yep. Four days left of the trip and we gotta bang off a few spreads while we're here. Fill them pages. Fill them pages. We're, we're about to check in and we overhear that this boat tour might not even go. All the weather conditions that we worry about for aviating, you also have to worry about when you're navigating on water. They just told us that the, they're gonna make an announcement and we might not go, and I think they're making an announcement right now. Everybody's getting up. Did it go or no go? I don't know. Your pass? It's a go! We're really putting our camera weather ceiling to the test today. <laughs> All right, haven't had a problem in the past. So? Not planning on having one now. Not planning on having one now. Let's go, before the boat kicks off without us. I don't know if you can see on video, but the rain is sideways. The rain is sideways. Sideways rain. Sideways rain. 
Holy shit! Going in. Going in. It's cold as shit, man. Holy god. Wet My wet. eye is like <laughs> wet, windy. RDF. You True definition of the RDF. Range of little fog. Freaking epic. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. Oh, man. I think it's raining, but it's these epic. conditions are perfect. What do you think? It's insane. <laughs> insane. The rain was just like coming directly on the lens. Like you'd bring your camera up to take a picture. After one picture, it'd be covered in water. <laughs> I'm soaked and freezing and I don't give a shit because this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Towel. You take it down, wipe it off, bring it up to shoot again, and then immediately it was covered in water. I was just so happy to be there and to be shooting. I didn't even care that there was water on my lens. Just stepped into my second card, take a couple of pictures, bring it down, wipe it off, and keep going. about 10 years on that one. Was it worth it though? Oh man, that was so good. It's so cold and so wet, but it was so worth it. Like the fog made it so good. Yeah, just really amazing to see it. I can't believe it took us this long. My shoulders are burning. Same, I'm so tired and everything, my legs are wet. Our dead cat looks dead right now. To Fort Saunders. To Fort Saunders. <sighs> So after the boat tour, we were freezing our asses off. There was freezing rain, there was sleet. At that point, I knew I had not just one, but I probably had a couple shots that were that were printable, print worthy. So we were soaked, we were wet, we were freezing. So we stripped down in the parking lot, put all of our wet clothes on the dashboard and the heater, hung stuff up in the back seats. It was the actual car was an absolute mess. So Port Saunders was the second to last stop on our trip and the plan was to home base there. So we we're hoping that the last few days of this trip would give us a small window at least one night so we could get some shots of the Newfoundland landscapes with some stars in the background. The problem was is the forecast for the rest of the trip was not gonna be clear skies at night. In fact, it was more rain, drizzle, fog, and high winds. So we finally got the weather that we were wishing for. Foggy, overcast, mozzy, and the only issue though is it's still very windy, which makes it unpleasant. I think the weather's supposed to get worse later, so. We're not gonna be able to shoot any astrophotography because the sky is supposed to be overcast basically for the entire time we're here. We're just gonna kind of shoot some stuff around here. Probably drive around a little bit afterwards and see what we can find. Let's go. We just spotted a caribou on the side of the road. We just, morale is pretty low today. It's getting pretty dark, so we're gonna throw the 200 to 600 on, hope for the best. I'm her caddy. You're my caddy. I'm the caddy. Like, what lens do you want? She's like, 200, 600. Yeah, I gotta peep that wildlife. Sniped him from the car. Look at this fur. I wanted to see caribou. There you go, it's under the... That was pretty cool. That was definitely a little bit of a boost. I was really, like, not feeling it today, man. Feeling like I'm done with this. Like, I'm so fatigued and tired. I didn't realize how difficult it would be to, like, shoot photos and actually get good photos for two weeks straight. Up, up early and out late, shooting all day long. I don't know, just almost tipped over my tripod, just, like, lost my shit. Like, that's where I'm at right now. I gotta get in the car. Come on in. Dude, it is so cold. It's like, you can't even do anything out here. These conditions are impossible to shoot in. All right, my only thought of maybe getting somewhat of a unique shot is to, because there's no contrast in the sky, so if we can get on higher ground and shoot telephoto looking down it, I think it'd be a unique perspective. And you also might get the horizon in the background then. Those highlands over there are pretty far away. It's probably further than it looks. It's super windy and super cold. Also, we're losing light, and also it's too windy to even use a tripod for somewhat of long exposure. Like, I'm literally was in the car trying to shoot clips of Becky, with a telephoto lens, and it, it was like you could see the vibrations of the car shaking because of the wind shaking the car. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>
I feel like this shot would be improved if I could get to some higher ground. Hopefully I'll get a better view of the lighthouse that will at least allow me to take a more interesting picture. So I start my trek and the wind now was howling. It was so windy. I'm walking through this bog, this dodging little puddles. And then I hit this little forested patch. It looked like shrubs and bushes from far away. I don't know what it was. It was tangly and there were trees. So I, I find this little game trail where I can kind of like step over some of these scraggly old trees, getting whipped in the face with branches. So there's piles of snow and piles of moose droppings. And then after I get past that, then there's this steep incline, which I have to scale. But I'm thinking, you know what? Keep pushing, Chris. There's gonna be a huge payoff at the end. You're gonna get this awesome shot of the lighthouse. It's all gonna be worth it. Climb to the top, out of breath. What do you think I see when I crest the top of this hill? What the fuck? I could have driven there. <laughs> And then I turned around and the lighthouse looked pretty much the same as it did on the, <laughs> on the ground, from the lower ground. The shot wasn't really that good at all. So I just said, you know what, screw this, I'm going home. So I just pulled my phone out, called Becky and had her pick me up on the road. too windy to open the door. <laughs> There's a road. <laughs> I was stepping over moose droppings, climbing through the, those trees are taller than they look. It was a trek and I could have just leisurely walked on this road. I just snapped off motor drive. I don't even know if there's anything usable there. Thought it was a cool shot of you coming up with like the, the headlights, but it might just be too noisy. <laughs> but we tried, right? I pushed I the, got the caddy. You smell great. That's, <laughs> you that's smell spruce. like spruce. Oh, that's a word for that? Yeah. Okay, it was Tuckermore. Yeah, it was Tuckermore. Spruce trees that are weathered and tangled from the wind. And they just look like this. Well, anyway. this was an interesting excursion. <laughs> I think it's time to go back to the Airbnb. Then after Port Saunders, we were feeling so defeated and we didn't really get any good images. Despite trying so hard at the lighthouse, we, you know, came away with one picture. We are leaving Port Saunders today. We are on the home stretch here now, headed to Corner Brook, which is the main city center on this side of the island on the west coast. We have one more place that we want to shoot. I think it's going to be a bus tonight. The weather does not look good. It looks about what we experienced last night. But tomorrow, we're supposed to get sunset. So we're going to try to meet up with our friend Drew for our last sunset shoot of the trip. To our last destination of Cornerbrook. Are you ready to go land. home? Yes. I am excited to stay in the hue and draw though, just to get my brain tickled with some interior shit. We knew we had two days left and the weather was not looking good for this one day. So we just decided, you know what, let's take a step back. The weather's not gonna be good. Let's relax. Let's take the night oh, off. Oh, uh, you wanted one too? Let's go in the hot tub. Let's just recharge so that we can go out the next day if the weather's good and just have a really great last night. We're on uh, the way to our last shoot. We are heading from Cornerbrook out to Lark Harbor, which is about 53 minutes. Yeah, up with a buddy of mine, Drew. He was like shooting snowboard videos when I was shooting BMX videos. So I, like, I've known him since like I was a kid. He shoots photos, he's a professional photographer now. And uh, we're just gonna meet up and uh, he's gonna take us to one of his favorite spots. I think we're gonna get a sunset time. I think it's probably gonna be a pretty good one too. That the Bay of Islands that we just saw off the right. Coming back unreadable. My battery is uh, dying. <laughs> All right, Drew took us to his favorite spot in Bottle Cove up on these cliffs here. Known as Sunset Rock. Is this Sunset Rock? Yeah, probably we're, name. We're here at sunset. What if you're here at not during sunset? Uh, it's just a rock. It's just rock. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a fantastic way to end off this trip. There's like not a lot of wind and it's like actually warm out. It's a great evening. It was very nice to interact with people again who share a passion for shooting, who share an interest in photography and video too. And it was just a really enjoyable night.
Very enjoyable. Very enjoyable, nice. There's a cotton candy sunset over there. I need to get that shot. You know, the interesting thing was is that despite it being the last night and despite us having all this pressure to get banger images to really end the book off on a strong note, we sort of forgot about all that when we were with friends because we were just hanging out. Went back to the parking lot and I saw a shot of Bottle Cove and I wanted to try to get it a long exposure at night. Wasted all of our time and now it's really dark. We've got one more shot left on our list before we leave and we call it quits for this trip. And that'll be, I guess, the final image final for this image. trip. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Beck? It's been really nice to spend this last night with Drew and Joey and just being outside with friends who shoot as well. And it's just so much fun to just sit there, shoot the shit, take a couple pictures and like not stress about the shot at all. Basically just hanging out with friends. Yeah, I'm glad we came out and it's pretty exciting to be kind of like on the, the last kind of shoot now. And you know, I'm ready to head home, but I think this is a great last night. It's 11 o'clock now, we're gonna push it a little later. Midnight, the old midnight oil's out. I'm like definitely ready to go home, pretty tired. I'm ready to be home. I just wish I could teleport home. Sh shooting photos all day, every day, it didn't really leave enough time for anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to see everything, which was fun. You hit sunset, and here sunset sets at 920 p.m. You might be at a location that's maybe 45 minutes to an hour away from your Airbnb. You shoot till Civil End, which is like pushing 10 o'clock now. Then mm -hmm. you drive home, now it's 11. And then you get, you dump all your cars, now it's 12. You get ready for bed, it's 12.30. Yeah. So you're like in bed at like after midnight. So it was very, yeah, a lot less sleep than I had anticipated. Your mom texted yesterday and was like, what are the most disappointing and the most memorable parts of your trip? When you sit down and think about what are, what are those moments, you start to realize like how much we just experienced over the last two, two weeks. You plan a trip and you figure it's gonna be this certain way and then suddenly you're like, oh, well, there's more time in a day, there's more experiences to be had and things don't go as planned. So I started thinking about those disappointing moments and those exciting moments and I was like, wow, like we actually had a really great time. And there were a lot of memorable moments. I couldn't really think of one disappointing moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're gonna look back on this trip and be like, wow, that was like a lot of fun. Let's hope that we have enough pictures for uh, this book. Oh my God. We'll, we'll be able to tell in the next couple of weeks. It was a Drew who asked, like, do you have enough pictures for the book? And we're like, I have no idea. It's like, we might, it might, it might be a pamphlet instead of a book. <laughs> a little flyer. Yeah. A little trifold brochure. <laughs> The trip is winding down, coming to an end. We're flying out that day, and the big question still looms. Did we capture enough good images to make this book? You know, this project started as sort of a idea to create a photography book full of imagery of Newfoundland. It was us trying to show off our province and let people see it the way we see it. Going through it and seeing how much more difficult that was to actually execute, just given all of the constraints. As the trip went on and as I kind of thought more about my background in photojournalism, you know, I kind of realized that it was about more so documenting a place or a snapshot in time. A lot of times people take, you know, years to create these photography books with their best portfolio pieces, but that's not what this is and that's not what this is really supposed to be. It's a bunch of images that tell a short story that's just like a little period of the story of your entire life. And it's not about the best pictures, it's about capturing a sense of place through your own vision and through the lens of your camera. You know, there are some instances where it really felt like I was back shooting for the newspaper again, being thrown into unknown situations with less than ideal conditions and knowing that I had to come out with a print-worthy image. And that's just it, right? We're pulling from different experiences. We are only products of what we know, and I'm pulling on my photojournalism experience and approaching these photo shoots from that perspective. Becky's looking at it from a standpoint of, okay, how can I shoot for print from start to finish? And she's, you know, maybe leaving a bit of space here because she knows she's gonna put text over it. And that's just from her experience as a graphic designer. I think it's really important that we take the time to, you know, take these images and not let them die on our hard drive, to take them out and to create something with them, whether it's a full-blown photo book or, you know, hanging them on your wall or, you know, actually posting them somewhere online that you can look back on so they just don't get lost forever. Ooh, I feel like I'm opening presents on Christmas. I can open up for real this time. Whoa, here it is. It's finally here. Wow. 
Ooh, it's substantial. Man, 130 pages. I know. We did it. <laughs> I'm really impressed how it turned out. So this book isn't just limited for us. We're going to print a bunch of copies. And if you guys are interested in picking up a copy for your own coffee table, we'll leave a link in the description box below with all those details. And we hope that when you're flipping through the book, you can kind of get a better sense now of what went into not just making it, but also feel like you were part of that two week snapshot in time and really see what the island of Newfoundland means to us. The whole project has been really meaningful to not only be able to spend two weeks in a place that we're very passionate about, but to also, you know, meld the passion for photography and graphic design and be able to put that together and produce something physical to have. Like, there's still so much more to see. And honestly, like, we haven't even touched Labrador. Like I've never been to, to Labrador, which is like an entire other part of this one province. And I can't stop thinking about the Torngat Mountains. Part two? Part two. <laughs> Catch you on the next one. Man, it is nice out. Smell that. <laughs> I hate to use the word. We call them horse eggs. H horse eggs? Horse eggs. They're those little spinal <laughs> things that grow on the, on the bottom of the ocean. They're sea urchins? Sea urchins. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how tell uh, when the lobsters have, uh, have made it? They're smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> There's your slut. This land can't kettle is called a slut, and I have no idea why. Ooh, no way! I bought all the sour keys. <laughs> oh my god, those are the good ones. This is just like, that it? I'm like, yeah, two more bags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got bones in it. Is that your impression? You can't even see me. <laughs> you can't. No, he's just so robust. Yeah. Use me. So two pages, like one spread. Mm -hmm. Is that what the graphic designer lingo calls it? A spread? A spread, yeah. Okay. See? Good job. See how impressive I am? Those are not the dildos. No, that's the Orla. We had this conversation before. Yeah. 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 It goes downhill pretty quick. I can't believe we pulled it off, honestly. <laughs> when we got home, I was like, pamphlet. <laughs> We're gonna have to make a seven by seven, like, tiny bug. Trifold brochure. Yeah. <laughs>